It is such a magnetic place, and it has so much of a power over not just me, but I've seen it with other people too, that you feel drawn to it. It attracts creativity, it attracts ghosts maybe. Roycroft may not be the most haunted site on our list. It may not be the most haunted site in western New York, but it may be the most interesting. Maybe the most interesting in the Northeast from all perspectives. It was founded in 1895 as a fine arts printing operation by a businessman and mystic known as Albert Hubbard, a true Yankee original. Albert was not any one thing. You know, he wasn't an architect, he wasn't an engineer, he wasn't a furniture designer. He was a writer and he was a philosopher and understood a lot of different philosophies. He was most likely an early psychical researcher, probably a theosophist, maybe a Freemason, almost certainly a Rosicrucian. The Rosicrucians are an established uh, centuries old school that emphasizes teachings of a cultural education and philosophical nature. Many of the persons you've probably heard through over history are traditional Rosicrucians such as Plato, uh, Pythagoras, Sir Francis Bacon, Sir Isaac Newton. It's a school that emphasizes freedom of thought and understanding of the physical, spiritual, emotional, and psychic well-being of the human being, and there's a systematic approach in its teachings that passed over time. We know he was a member of the American uh, Theosophical Society, the American Psychical Society. It, almost any of those kinds of things interested him. These are all groups of people who are interested in mystical philosophy. And one of the ways they express that frequently is through sacred architecture. And there are a great many signs at Roycroft that whoever put this place together was giving us a little coded message. The sculpted figure that's on the chapel, a man or a human-like figure with rays radiating out from it in red, suggests that there, as you come to this place, it is a special place of esoteric significance or of spiritual significance and something to be aware to look for various signs throughout here. Uh, in terms of its interpretation, I would concur it's along the suggestion of a God creator figure or a God figure radiating life, wisdom and well-being, or a figure of a master or a wise sage person. I think it's very much along those lines and it's certainly a telltale sign this is a place of profound significance here. The philosophy of the Roycroft is the most important part about it, not the style. In fact, as an interior designer, I like to tell people it's not a style. It is a way of life, a set of ideals. And Hubbard got them from the arts and crafts movement and other people, but that was what he, it was about. The books and the writing was what Roycroft was most about. At Roycroft, they still do have an active cycle of haunted phenomena. Many people reporting funny sounds, moving objects, flickerings of the lights, but nobody's ever hurt by it, and nobody's ever scared. Albert um, and his wife, second wife Alice, died on board the Lusitania on May 7th in 1915. People reported back to Bert, Albert Hubbard II, that they had seen somebody who looked like Albert wandering the streets of Queenstown in Ireland. His body was never found. People say it's his spirit that you know, is one of the ones that's at the Roycroft. It's very possible. But I mean, I know of at least four people who died within the building. So I you know it's very possible that it could be their disembodied spirit as well. It's more feelings that people get here. Uh, waves of, uh, oh gee, I feel so good and at home. And it's feelings that people have an overwhelming wave of some positive, good thing. I've never been bothered by it. I can walk through the Roycroft Inn at this building in the middle of the night, three, four o'clock in the morning, and I don't fear a thing. In fact, I feel protected.